This is a satellite that turns into a drone. And today, we're going to be launching a kilometer into the sky just like that. You're probably a bit confused right now, so let me explain. Basically, there's this thing called a CANSAT, which is a Kansai satellite that gets launched in a rocket and performs some sort of scientific mission on the way down. Now, usually the descent is done with a parachute, but parachutes are kind of lame, so what if we generated our own thrust and did guided landing? These are some of the smallest propellers I could find at only two inches. And these are, wait a second. Okay, so I did not order this. I think they gave me the Ron pack. I guess we're using this motor then. As you might already tell, the plan is to use propellers to control the descent. And using this mechanism allows them to fold inward so that it's compact enough to fit in the rocket. Many people have actually tried similar controlled descent missions in the past, but it seems like no one has done so successfully, so maybe we'll be the first? These motors are super cute, but unfortunately the wires are too short, so let's solder on some longer ones. Now that we have our four motors, we just need a way to lock and release the arms. Now there are three main ways of doing this. We can have a plate that turns, we can have a plate that moves vertically, or we can have a wire that gets cut or burned. The obvious choice is the plate that moves vertically, as the rotating one is more complex, and cutting the wire is both unreliable and hard to reset. However, the servo motors I plan to use rotate, so maybe the rotating method makes more sense? But they're also pretty huge, so is there an alternative? Then out of nowhere, I discovered the best invention in human history. Nope, it's not fire, it's not the internet, and it's not that plane over there. It's this. A 1.5G linear servo motor. It's absolutely tiny, and best of all, it uses a warm gear to move linearly rather than. So let's make a quick mechanism for it. And. It seems like because of the long lever arm here, the release mechanism gets stuck due to friction. So I modeled this new one with space for two servo motors. In doing so, I also discovered that pushing against a flat surface creates much less friction than pushing against a corner. It's really small things like this that make mechanical engineering just so fascinating. After modeling a more finalized upper section, I think it's time for our first proper prototype. This is probably one of my best CAD designs by far. Every single part is made with intention, everything is held together with screws rather than super glue. It's intricate but easy to print, it's just so beautiful. Okay, so here's the release mechanism, here are the middle plates, and here's the top section. The four arms need a bit of sanding, and after that, they can be screwed into place. At this point, I realized that the arms were slightly misaligned, so I printed some new ones, but turns out I printed the wrong file and they were still misaligned, so I printed it again and they were still. Now they are finally perfect. We can screw on our servo motors and nice. Yo. Let's move on to electronics. We need a video transmitter to record and transmit video, a flight controller to keep the drone stabilized, an ESC to control the speed of the motors, and an Arduino Nano to transmit scientific data back to the ground from our onboard sensors. Two of my friends are actually already working on that part, so I'm going to focus on these ones. The flight controller and ESC I have here are a bit too big, so I found the smaller one that combines both into the same board. Because this board is just so small, it was pretty challenging to solder. In fact, I broke one of the 
pads which genuinely scared me so much, but luckily there was an identical pad on the other side. To program the drone, the original intention was to use a software called ArduPilot so we could perform a fully autonomous GPS guided landing, but turns out putting a GPS guided system that targets a specific ground location on a rocket traveling 200 plus miles per hour might not be the best idea. We also couldn't get a compatible flight controller in time, so we are forced to manually control the CANSAT from the ground using a software called Betaflight, which is meant for FPV drones, but whatever. Here I am setting some basic settings that are needed for the drone to fly. The controller has to be set up to communicate, and we need an arm switch, which is basically a safety switch to unlock the drone when you're ready to fly. There's also a safety feature that prevents the drone from arming when it's moving too quickly or sitting at an angle, but we need to bypass it so we can arm the drone even when it's tumbling violently as it exits the rocket, like this. Although my calculations say that the motors provide enough thrust, I still kind of doubt that these tiny propellers are all that's needed to make this thing fly. So if this doesn't work, this project might be screwed. We're still far from finished, however, there are a lot of tiny things we need to change. For example, it was only after I added the motors that I realized these screws rub against the walls and cause too much friction for the arms to open, so we need to make some room for that. We also need to make some room for a plug here, we also need to make some room for this capacitor, we also need to make some room for the wires that go down, we need room for the camera cable that goes down, oh yeah, we need room for this fan on the top because the video transmitter tends to overheat. Speaking of the fan, while I was soldering it on, I kind of messed up. So for some reason, when I tried to plug the board in after soldering on the fan, there was a short, and thank god I had the short stopper on because if I didn't, this project would have actually just been over. Then I realized this small blob of solder was probably the issue, so when I removed it, yes, let's go, let's go, it was finally fixed. Fan spins as well, look at that, that is perfect. Cramming all these electronics into the tiny can genuinely took so long due to many unforeseen issues. Like for example, the video transmitter didn't have holes on the bottom so I had to force in these tiny nuts to hold it in place. These screws are kind of funny because if you try to use force, it ends up falling out or getting misaligned. But if you stay calm, you're much more likely to succeed first try. Which I guess is kind of an analogy for other things in life as well. Putting in all these screws is kind of annoying, but I'm just so glad that there's no super glue or duct tape. Now we can just attach all four of the arms and screw on the motors one by one in this super cool time lapse. And just like that, the densely filled upper section is done, and of course the arms release nice. perfectly. I also printed this antenna mount out of TPU, which fits snugly and secures onto the top of the can. The bottom section is a lot more simple and printed in one piece. The bottom holds the FPV camera, the battery with the sliding door to lock it in place, the receiver for my transmitter, and the Arduino Nano which is hooked up to some sensors and a radio to send real-time data like altitude and temperature back to the ground station. Speaking of that, my friends working on the Arduino spent like 3 days on it but couldn't get it to work, so I tried to help but I think I just made it worse. No! <laughs> no. It's stupid fucking Wait, wait, maybe wait 30 seconds, because for, for my really simple code, it had to wait like 30 seconds. And it worked? That's going to start printing errors <laughs> <laughs> after 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turns out, literally half the components we were using were somehow damaged, so one of my friends volunteered to drive all the way down to the US so that he could buy parts in time before the launch. And then, I yes, kid you yes, not, on the day before we had to fly it out, it yes, finally it's worked. Yo, let's go, Zach! <laughs> so now, let's just secure these components into the lower section, join everything with lead screws, 
And just like that, our satellite is finally finished. I'm a little bit concerned about the strength of these arms, but luckily, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services, but they also offer 3D printing, including metal 3D printing. Just upload your files for an instant quote, and PCBWay will make and ship the parts directly to your house. And now we have backup aluminum arms that look absolutely amazing. If you're working on a project and need metal 3D printing or any of these other services, make sure to check them out. I spent the last bit of time troubleshooting some stupid technical stuff, which you can pause here if you are interested. And yeah, let's go launch this thing. After a 1.5 hour flight, a 2 hour bus ride, and another 1 hour bus ride, we're now in the middle of nowhere. We started off the day by watching this other guy's rocket launch, which was pretty cool. But immediately afterwards, as we started preparing for our launch, the tension set in. Despite our beautiful design, almost no one had confidence in us. After all, guided landing had been tried so many times and it seems like all of them fail. There's just way too much uncertainty when it comes to launching something in a rocket. What if the rotation is too much for the flight controller to handle? What if the sheer force of the ejection tears the satellite apart? What if we lose connection? To make matters worse, the Arduino Nano that was working just the previous night randomly refused to send data, but our satellite was now already being put inside the rocket. There was nothing we could do but hope. And then, in a turn of events, our launch was delayed, because some other guy was launching a super large rocket that had priority. And don't get me wrong, his launch was absolutely spectacular. But by now, our satellite had been sitting inside an enclosed rocket for an entire hour, and the video transmitter was starting to overheat. It's actually over already. It's does have a chance, we can choose not to launch that rocket. But right before our launch, miraculously, the fan had somehow managed to cool the video transmitter down again, and it seemed like maybe, just maybe, everything would be all right. Sensat, we ready, Patu? We're ready. Ready. Watch it in five, four, four three, two, one. We had a pretty rough landing due to, of all things, pilot error. The plan was to free fall until right about 200 meters above the ground, max out the thrust, and fly back towards the launch site. But due to the stress, and because the landscape looked all the same, I didn't realize that the ground was coming until way too late. Luckily, we knew the general location of the Kansat thanks to the onboard footage, and it only took us a mere 3 to 4 minutes before it was located. Yo? Yeah. 
so intact. Somehow the Kansai was still completely intact with only slight bending in one of the arms. So after getting the arms replaced, the satellite was as good as new. We even managed to recover our data thanks to this single G-Force indicator. Just make a program to grab the value from every frame, graph it over time, and do some integration, and now you have altitude. We spent the rest of the day just flying this thing around randomly for fun, and we also did this freefall test, and I think I'm now a much better pilot. Speaking of that, we were actually offered a second launch on a bigger and more powerful rocket in Seattle during the summer, so make sure to let me know in the comments if you are interested. <laughs> and with that being said, special thanks to Zach, Daniel, Emery, Eric, and Cynthia for working on this project with me. Special thanks to everyone at CanSat who made this experience possible. And thank you to you for watching. See you next time.